I'm hearing on the street that we need a quick start guide for brand new editors in DaVinci Resolve. Why don't we make it? Hey, I'm Tom Graham for Envato Tuts Plus, and that's what this is. This is the quick start guide for brand new editors in DaVinci Resolve. It's a great, very powerful program, uh, and best of all, there's a free version that's pretty powerful as well, but that brings a lot of brand new editors to the table, and you, know, you need somewhere to start. It's fine, we've all been there. So I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to know to go from zero to hero and start editing today in the program. Now this is brought to you by Envato Elements, which is a super easy to use subscription service that gives you access to millions of creative assets that you can download and use in your projects right away. We're gonna see some of those assets in this little quick start guide as well. So to learn more about Envato Elements, click the little link in the description down below. But without further ado, let's open up DaVinci Resolve. Well, the first thing we've got to do is obviously download DaVinci Resolve. So if you haven't done that yet, just head to the Blackmagic Design website, go to DaVinci Resolve 18, uh, go free download now. The one on the left, this is your free download, DaVinci Resolve 18. It's a fully fleshed out free video editing software. DaVinci Resolve Studio is the paid version. Uh, you can see here it adds a few different things like AI region tracking, uh, Resolve effects filters, Fairlight effects, plugins and advanced HDR grading, things like that. Now, let's be honest, uh, you can get away with probably 90% of the work you need to do if you're just making videos for YouTube and things like that on DaVinci Resolve 18. So go ahead and download it for your Mac, your Windows, or if you're working on Linux, go ahead and download it for Linux. So pause the video now, download that if you haven't already, and then, uh, and then come back once it's downloaded and installed on your machine. All right, and we're back. Now we need to open up DaVinci Resolve, so let's do that right now. So when you first open up DaVinci Resolve, you'll be greeted with a very similar screen, uh, except your one won't have Envato work here. That's all of the projects that I work on for Envato Tuts Plus. You'll just have this here that says Untitled Project, uh, and maybe it'll look like this as well. You'll have your project libraries open on the left-hand side. Now, project libraries, uh, formerly known in DaVinci Resolve 17 as databases, but currently known uh, as project libraries, are basically the folder that all of your project uh, files are saved in on your machine. When you first install it, if you've just done so now, it will create a local database for you. And for the most part, you can go ahead and just leave that local database as is. But if you do wanna change where your database sits, or if you wanna create a project that sits on a portable hard drive, for instance, you can go down here to add project library. This is where you would name it and you would browse the location, you'd hit create and you'd be done. But I'm happy with where this one is, so we're just going to go in and double click on untitled project to bring open DaVinci Resolve. Now the very first thing I wanna do once this is open is I'm just gonna hit Command S and save the current project. So I'm gonna call this DaVinci Resolve Quick Start or DVR Quick Start, I think. And you can see that reflected up the top here. So now we know what project we're working in. Now before we go any further, I'm going to explain the layout of DaVinci Resolve if you've never seen it before. So let's focus down the bottom here. We've got these seven little icons and they basically pertain to seven different programs. So working from left to right, you've got media. This is where you bring in all of your footage, all of your clips, start to organize your project. Cut, the cut page is basically DaVinci Resolve's modern approach to editing. Uh, it's basically there to go from uh, zero, which is you know starting, putting all of your raw footage, your rushes into the program, uh, to hero as quickly as possible. Now, if you're a brand new editor and you're just learning about DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna go ahead and say, skip the cut page for now and move straight onto the edit page, which is a more traditional NLE or non-linear editor. If you've worked in Premiere Pro or even heard of Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or Sony Vegas or things like that, they are traditional NLEs or non-linear editors. And I think you know, if you're a brand new editor, it's, it's worth it to kind of learn the layout of these programs uh, and the layout of traditional editing before you move into something like the cut page, uh, which is where you can kind of change your workflow up a little bit. So we're gonna look at the edit page uh, and we're gonna come back to this in greater detail very shortly because I'll show you how to start an edit uh, and then kind of get from A to B very quickly. Moving forward, we've got Fusion. Now Fusion is the VFX and compositor sort of motion graphics tool in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's most akin to After Effects. Uh, the difference here though is that it's node based uh, and After Effects is layer based. So if you are used to After Effects, there is quite a learning curve coming across to Fusion. We won't be looking at Fusion today, it's a little bit more in depth. This is a quick start guide for beginners. 
Moving forward, we've got the color page. Now this is really what DaVinci Resolve uh, in the past has been known for. Uh, and then obviously they've developed out all the rest of the tools like the edit page and Fairlight and things like that. But uh, this is industry standard color grading and color correction tools here. So even in the free version, you've got access to just some really, really powerful tools. If you wanna learn to be a colorist, uh, or if you, you, know, you know, just want to learn more about the color page in DaVinci Resolve, then I reckon you should go and check out the color grading tutorial that I created for Envato Tuts Plus. Uh, it goes very in depth into this color page here and I'll, I basically show you every tool that you see here and how to use it. So uh, this is the color page. We'll come back to this briefly in this tutorial as well. But you know, like I keep saying, quick start guide, we've got to keep moving. Fairlight is the next one here. Fairlight is our audio editor. Nothing to see here at the moment, but I'll bring you back over here once we've put some footage uh, and some audio onto our timeline. Uh, this is where you can get a lot more granular with your audio editing than you can in the edit tab. And then finally, you've got deliver, which does exactly what it says on the tin. This is where you set your export settings, you render it out and you deliver your footage. We'll come back to this at the end of the little video. So you might think we're gonna go back to media here and start to import all of our stuff, but no, this is the quick guide for beginner editors. I'm going to take you straight to the edit tab here and I'm going to show you how to do it all basically within the edit tab, the color tab, and then the deliver tab as well. So in the edit tab, I'll kind of walk you through all the things that you're seeing on the screen as we start to build the edit out very quickly. In the top left-hand corner, you've got media pool, and this is basically a, you know, a smaller condensed version of your media tab. So in your media pool, you can right click and you can go new bin, and I'm gonna call this one elements. And that's because I've got some footage and some music from Envato Elements that I'll be bringing in. And that will be what makes up our edit. Now you might want to put rushes or music or, or whatever you want to do. Um, but I do urge you to use bins to kind of keep your edit nice and neat from the get go. The next one I'm going to do is right click create bin and then call this one timelines. And this is where I'll keep all my timelines. So going into the timelines bin, right clicking, go timelines, create new timeline. You can also do command N. This brings open the new timeline dialog. Now you can call this, let's call it DVR quick start. Uh, we'll call it demo, not demo, demo. Uh, you can, if you know that all of your project settings are set up right, which you can do down here uh, in the little cogwheel, bottom right hand side of the screen. If you know that all of that's right, you can just click create. But the super quick way to do it is just uncheck use project settings. And then you've got a few different things that you can check here. It's a condensed version of your wider global program settings. So really what I'm looking for is the format page and I wanna make sure my timeline resolution is set to 1920 by 1080. And for me, I wanna make sure the timeline frame rate is set to 25 frames because I work in a PAL region. 1920 by 1080, even if you've got 4K footage and you wanna export in 4K, uh, keep this on 1920 by 1080 for the time being. It will make your edit journey a lot quicker and a lot smoother when you're actually crafting and working on your edit. But then in the deliver page later on, we can set that to 4K if we're working with 4K footage and we can export at the higher resolution. So making sure that's 1920 by 1080, 25 frames per second or whatever you need it to be. Uh, we've got our, you know, uh, our timeline named, it's in stereo, whatever you need to change there you can change. Hit create and you'll see there it's created a timeline for us to start working in. You'll see the timeline over here on the left hand side and you'll see it denoted up here as well. Now if you've got multiple timelines, they'll all be here and this is where you can quickly switch between each timeline rather than going in and double clicking to open up a new timeline over here. So let's just bring some footage onto the timeline so we've got some things to look at as we demonstrate the rest of the uh, edit page. So basically going into our elements here, we just wanna bring some media in. So we can either just go to our finder window or our explorer window if we're on PC and just drag and drop footage into this bin or you can right click and go import media or you can do command I. So clicking import media, you'll see here, it basically is going to open up uh, where I've got my footage stored. I'm gonna hit okay to drag that in uh, and I'm gonna do it one more time, command I and just bring in uh, this music track here. So now I've got my footage into DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to select it all or I could just do it individually, but I'm gonna select it all either dragging my mouse around or hitting command A and then I'm just gonna drag and drop that onto the timeline going to use command minus and you can do command plus to zoom in but command minus to zoom out to start to see what we've got here uh, and then I'm going to drop my media pool away by clicking this button up here this just gives us a bit more screen real estate so you can see here I've got uh, footage here I've got the cinematic drone I've got this woman here I've got this woman here and then down here I've got this portrait of this guy plus I've got a music track here which I'm just going to mute so that uh, you know you guys can still hear me um, I've got this music track here that's playing underneath. Now, if I just click and drag this around, I can click and drag the music track down below. 
but I can't drag the music track up above because we've got our audio down below in green and we've got our video up above in blue. You can see here V1, A1, audio track, video track. Now you can have multiple video tracks. You can see here, I've just dragged that up and it's created you know, video two, video three, four, five, et cetera. Uh, and you would usually use that to layer different things, like you can put the footage over the top of each other, uh, or you can put graphics over the top and so on and so forth. That's how you layer things over the top of each other. You can do the same with audio. Uh, you can create multiple audio tracks, as you can see here. So for instance, you could have different tracks like for dialogue, for music, for sound effects, and, and so on. You can also label them here as well. So if I just double click on this and I go music, uh, or for instance, you know, if there was two people being interviewed, you could do you know, person A, person B, uh, music, etc. It's good to keep things labeled just so you know what's happening. Uh, now I mentioned before as well, I muted that track. So uh, just hitting M there mutes the track. If I unmute it and play it, it's gonna be very loud, but I'll just play it very quickly. You know, you can see there it plays. Uh, so you can mute, you can solo, uh, and you can lock tracks as well. So if I lock that track, I now can't click and drag around. I also can't make edits to it. So it's sometimes handy to lock the music track uh, if you do want to make some edits to the video without, you know, splitting up your music. Now this piece of footage that I brought in over here, uh, you can see that the video and audio has come in. These ones don't have any audio on them. This one technically doesn't have any audio on it as well, but it has dragged in a, you know, a, a blank audio track. So how do we get rid of that? I want to just click on it and delete it, but if I click on it and delete it, it's going to delete my video as well. Well, what you want to do is you want to unlink them. You can see this little uh, chain icon here. That means things are linked. Now, globally for this timeline, if I click on this button here, it means I can unlink things. And now those two, they're still technically linked, you can see here, but it means that I can select them individually. So if I do that, I can then just delete the audio track, which is great. So just hitting Command Z to undo that so I can demonstrate further. If this is still selected and things are linked, you can individually unlink tracks. So you can right click and go link clips here and that will individually unlink these tracks even though the global track link is on. So again, I can just delete that piece of footage. Now I'm just clicking and dragging things around here uh, and that's pretty simple to do. And we're using this tool here, which is the selection tool. That's also A on your keyboard. If I wanted to start making edits to these pieces of footage or the music or, or you know whatever it is, let's say I wanted to cut the music here, I can go over and use my blade tool or I can hit B on the keyboard and you'll see that's been uh, selected there. And I can simply just click. Now, if I zoom in and move the playhead around, you can see that that has created a cut and now back on my A tool here, I can click and I can drag that away. And now I've got two pieces of music uh, or you know I can just delete that. And another way to make that edit would just be to grab the end of the track like here and just drag it down. Uh, and therefore it's also done you know, that same edit that you would have done with the blade tool. Now, when I do things like this on the timeline, this is a non-destructive editor. So basically what it means is on the timeline, I can chop this up as much as I want. I can, you know, use my blade tool here, chop the end of that, delete it. I can chop this up as much as I want, but that piece of footage is still in my media pool intact. The full piece is intact. Uh, and then it's also on my finder, like on my actual computer, it's also intact as well. So you can chop everything up as much as you want uh, in your timeline, you can delete it, uh, you can move it around. And if for instance, you've you know, made a mistake and you, you can't go back enough times, you can just bring that piece of footage back in and create the same edits again, it's really simple. Now quickly giving you more of an overview of the edit page here. We've got our media pool, which we've already gone through. Then we've got effects up here. So you've got different things like uh, this is where you can start creating some texts and titles and things like that. Uh, again, check out uh, Invado Tuts Plus on YouTube. It's the channel you're watching right now. I've done some text tutorials for DaVinci Resolve on there. And a lot of the video tutorials that we have for DaVinci Resolve, I go through all of these things as well. If you do wanna learn how to become an editor, in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm not talking just about learning where things are on the program, I'm talking about actually learning how to craft and edit from a creative process point of view. I did make a tutorial for beginner editors uh, specifically for DaVinci Resolve. So I sit with you for about an hour and a half and we go through from opening up the project, showing you where everything is, bringing footage in, making edit decisions, kind of crafting a little micro documentary with some footage that I shot a few years ago, um, adding music, adding titles, all of that good stuff, and then exporting it for the web. So if you do wanna learn more about actually editing, go ahead and check out that video now. I'll put the link in the description below. So FX, that's all up here. For the purpose of this little quick start, don't worry about index, don't worry about sound library for now. You can look at all of these in your own time. Mixer over here just turns on the audio mixer, which I think is a good thing to have when you're editing. You've got your metadata, you've got your inspector as well. So your inspector basically, if you've selected a piece of footage uh, or audio, you can 
well, it'll be different tools for audio, but uh, if you've selected a piece of footage here, you can zoom in and out, uh, you can reposition. Uh, let's just say we want to reposition like so. Uh, and you know, obviously depending on the resolution that you're working with, uh, if it's 4K on a 1080 timeline, you can zoom in you know, only so much and, and so forth. So don't go too crazy, but that's uh, how you can reposition things there. If you want to undo that, you just click these little uh, undo arrows on the side. You've got things like rotation angle, anchor point, pitch yaw, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you've got some cropping tools here as well. Uh, and then you've got your composite mode as well. So all of your different blending modes here as well, uh, as well as your opacity. So that's the, uh, that's the inspector. Uh, let's just you know, go through and clear all this off. Now, speaking of videos I did on DaVinci Resolve that are over on the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel, I did a quick one which went through some keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve. And I think as a new editor, if you're wanting to learn this and, uh, and learn it quickly, there are a couple of things that you do need to know, especially transport controls. And what I mean by transport controls is like play, pause, fast forward, and, and things like that. So let's just move all of this footage down here and we'll bring our playhead to the very start. Play, space bar, pause, space bar. Uh, if you want to speed up your footage while it's playing, you can hit uh, L on your keyboard to play. Hit L again and it will be two times speed. You can see that denoted down here. Keep hitting it and you can go all the way up to 64 times speed. So that's really good for scrubbing through your selects or rushes on the timeline. You can do the same thing with J. Uh, so you just hit backwards a few times and it will go back uh, you know, in time <laughs> uh, at various speeds. And then again, I'm hitting play to stop that. Um, when things are playing, you can hit K on your keyboard to stop as well. And if you hold K and you press forward one frame, you can see there I'm just advancing one frame every time I press it. Uh, and again, you can do that in reverse, holding K and hit J a couple of times and it reverses uh, per times that you hit the keyboard, that will reverse each frame. Cool, so let's say that we're happy with that edit and we wanna just do a basic color grade uh, before we export out. Uh, you can go over to the color tab and you'll see here all of your pieces of footage are denoted here. Let's quickly go back to the color page just to show something here. If you go back to the color page and you make a cut to one of these pieces of footage, let's make a cut to this one. So selecting my blade tool and making a couple of cuts here. So all those pieces of footage are still there and they're all still playing through, but they're being cut up. We go into the color page again now, you can see that those cuts are reflected in the color page. So the more cuts you have on your timeline, the more uh, images will show up here and the more, I guess, color grading you'll have to do. But it's pretty easy to copy your grade over if you've got the same footage. So let's say we wanted to push this piece of footage here uh, to more of like a teal and orange look. We'll just bring some teal into the shadows, uh, some you know orange up into the highlights here, a bit of warmth in the mids. Uh, play around with this. Let's just say, you know, this little wacky situation is exactly what we want. Uh, maybe bring the highlights down a little bit. It's getting a bit moody, I like that. That's fun. Let's say, let's say we're really happy with that. Looks lovely. Um, and you can preview your uh, grade here with this little magic button tool up here, turn it off and on, and it basically bypasses the grade so you can see what you've done. You can also do that per node, hitting Command D, turning your nodes on and off. So let's say we wanna copy that grade across to these pieces of footage as well so that it doesn't just do this in the edit. And you're playing it with a nice grade and then, oh, the grade just snaps off. Let's copy that over. So clicking on here, making sure this one's selected, you right click and you go grab still. And now that will come up in the gallery section here. So you'll see that denoted there. Now easily, all I need to do is select this one here, hold command and then select the rest and right click and go apply grade. And you'll see that now has been applied across all of these pieces of footage. And again, back into our edit, you'll see that's applied across all of those pieces of footage. Now, if you do wanna learn a lot more about the DaVinci Resolve color page, please go and check out my DaVinci Resolve uh, beginner color grading tutorial. I go through everything you need to know about color correction and then color grading footage. Uh, again, about an hour and a half, I sit with you, I go through every tool that you see on the color page here, and I work through all of my process about you know why I'm making different color decisions and things like that. I go through scopes, I go through everything that you need to know on the page here. But really, what you wanna look at here is you know, lift, gamma, gain, and offset, plus some color tools. So you can find all that in the primaries color wheel. So we'll just look at this piece of footage here. Lift is your shadows. So you can see here, I'm uh, grabbing this little jog wheel and moving it to the left, that's bringing my shadows down, moving it to the right, that's bringing my shadows up, uh, resetting here. So you can bring your shadows down a little bit. Gamma is your mid-tones, so bringing your mid up or down, and then gain is your highlights, so bringing that up or down as well. Offset globally does that, again, up and down on the luminance with this little jog wheel. 
Now the color wheels, let's just say we wanted to make this a little bit more teal and orange. It's already kind of heading that way. Uh, we can just grab the little wheel in the middle on our shadows, bring a little bit of teal down into the shadows here, which is bringing the nice sky out. It's bringing more teal into our shadows here. And then on our gamma, which is our midtones, remember, we'll push that a little bit towards like red, just a little bit. And then in our highlights, which is our gain, we'll push that towards orange. And then we're getting that kind of like teal and orange look. Now I think it needs to go a little bit more darker here on the teal side of things. So we'll just grab the offset wheel and we'll play with that. Actually, that looks pretty good there. Uh, and then we'll just play with that a little bit. So let's say we're happy with that. Then across the top here, you've got temperature, obviously cooler or warmer. Uh, you've got tint plus or minus green or magenta. Uh, you've got contrast, that's pretty self-explanatory, adding more or subtracting contrast from your footage. And you've got other things like color boost, so that will just uh, boost specific colors within the image. You can see there those teal and oranges are really coming out now if we push that. Uh, you know, let's move it to roughly around about here. If you wanted to saturate the entire image more, you can grab the saturation and that just boosts the saturation for the entire image, not those specific colors. Highlights, pull your highlights down. Shadows, pull your shadows down and up. Pretty self-explanatory. And then you got hue shift as well. If you want to really get crazy and shift the hue around, you can do so. Um, there's a whole bunch of other tools, like I said. Go ahead and check out my much longer, much more in-depth tutorial about how to color grade individual resolve. But the last little thing I'll leave you with for this quick start guide is how to use LUTs. So up here on the left-hand side, you've got your LUTs. Now LUTs, basically, if you're not aware, it stands for lookup tables, but effectively what it is, is it's a, it's a filter. It's a filter for your footage. So DaVinci Resolve comes with all of these uh, LUTs for different cameras and different manufacturers. And you would use those to go from log footage or raw footage to you know, a basic color grade or color correction, really. So these are all kind of specific to different cameras that you're working with. Uh, but you can also bring in your own LUTs as well. And I've brought in a few from Elements here. So let's just kind of click on here and have a little play and see how they work. Uh, let's find something like, you know, Hong Kong. Uh, and we'll just hover our mouse over and kind of start to see what that does. So these ones, you know, you can see immediately that's giving that kind of really nice cool look. Uh, I think this one looks good. So let's just say we're happy with this one. You can right click and go apply LUT to current node. And there we go. We'll drop that away. You can see there, holding Command D to turn that off and on. We've gone from, you know, a relatively nice piece of footage, but there's nothing really uh, stylistically about the grade that's interesting to something that looks pretty stylistically interesting. And, and we can go from there and then just tweak that as well. A little bit more blue in those shadows like we had before, a little bit more, uh, you know, orange into the highlights, playing with our contrast, bringing that down a little bit or up, uh, you know, saturating certain parts of the image. Uh, and then just bringing that all down a little bit. Like I think that looks really cool and we've done that in just a few clicks. So there you go, pretty simple. But like I said, super powerful tool. So much to learn about the color page in DaVinci Resolve. So go check out the more in-depth tutorials. Let's say we're finished now, we're happy. We'll go back to our edit just to make sure that everything's ready to export. Oh, one last thing actually before we go, uh, you know, I should have mentioned this in the edit portion. If you do want to change the audio levels here, you can click on your audio track and you can just grab this white line that's running through the middle. You'll see these little arrows denoted uh, when you put your mouse over it. You can hover over, you can grab that, and then you can just drag it down. And you'll see that little readout there. So we, we want to hit maybe about negative six, negative seven uh, when we've just got music overlay. Uh, if you've got music overlay plus dialogue, you want to pull that back down to something like, you know, negative 23, 24, but kind of see what feels right for you. So. Uh, we'll, we'll bring it about, down to about there. I'm gonna unmute it now, just so we can see what happens over in the mixer and you can hear it. So I'll play that through. And you can kind of get an idea over here in the mixer. You want things to be sitting in that sweet spot in the yellow and not really hitting the red. So we're, we're still a little bit loud here on those drum beats. So I'm just gonna grab it down and bring it back down to maybe about negative nine. So that's perfect because actually our uh, bus one here, that's our main audio feed that's out. That's our kind of global mix. So as long as that's not hitting yellow or red, we're, uh, we're golden. Perfect. All right, so to finish this off, uh, clicking anywhere in the timeline past your footage, you can just hit up on your keyboard, hit O to create an out point. And if you don't have an in point already, it will create an in point just at the start of your footage. If you just wanted to you know, export just this part, you could go your in point there, but we want to export the whole thing. So in and out like so. So that means we're now ready to export. So go over to your deliver tab 
And you'll see here your in and out points are selected. Uh, you've got the right uh, timeline. If you had multiple timelines that you wanted to export as well, you can change those up here or select them up here. Over on the left hand side, these are all of your render settings. Let's say we want to make a H.264 master, which is what you want to use when you're uh, uploading to the web. So clicking on that, that's going to just put some basic settings in. And then what we've got to do is we're going to go through and we're going to browse where we want this to be. So I'm just going to put this on the desktop. And again, we'll call this quick start demo. And hit OK. So that's done our file name and our location. Then we want to make sure this is rendering one single clip. We don't want to re uh, render out all of these individual clips. We want it to render out one single clip. Then down here in the video settings, you obviously want to make export video, uh, make sure that's selected. In format, I'm going to actually change that to MP4 and keep the codec on H.264. Now this is because we're uploading it for the web and an MP4 is kind of your standard delivery method for the web. Down here, this is your resolution, which is currently set to the timeline resolution of 1920 by 1080. This is where we can go ahead and set that to 4K if we want to set that uh, to 4K to render out our 4K footage. For me, I'm just going to keep that on 1920 by 1080 right now, uh, and then we're going to keep that at 25 frames per second. Now you can keep the quality on automatic, or you can restrict it to a certain amount of uh, kilobits per second, depending on where you're uploading it. Say for instance, uh, you're uploading to YouTube, well, the upload limit for uh, 4K footage for YouTube, I believe at uh, 4K 25 frames per second is 45,000 kbps. Uh, for HD, I think it is 8,000. You can look at that yourself depending on where you're uploading your footage and you can change the quality to match. We'll just keep it on automatic for now. And you can also hit multi-pass encode as well. If you do want to encode it multiple times, uh, what that does is gets you slightly higher uh, quality, but also eliminates some of those rendering artifacts that you might get on a lower bitrate um, MP4 export. So that's basically all good to go. Hit add to render queue. And you'll see here it goes over to our render queue on the right hand side. Now let's say we wanted to do two renders at once. We can do that. Let's say we also want to do a ProRes master of this one, just a master copy that we can keep on our drive. Uh, we're not going to upload this one because, you know, it'll be a bigger file format. It's not optimized for web like MP4 is, but we do want to have that nice chunky master copy uh, that we can watch locally. Again, we'll go and browse where we want it to be. Again, we'll just call this uh, quick start demo. Uh, and this can be the same name as well because uh, this is going to be a .mov, whereas the MP4 is a .mp4. In our video settings, we want to make sure QuickTime is selected, Apple ProRes, and then you can pick your flavor of ProRes. I'm happy here, Apple ProRes 422 HQ, keeping it on 1920 by 1080, depending on what you're working with, put it to 4K if you need, 25 frames per second, all happy there. You know, use constant bitrate, that's going to get you a, uh, a bigger file, uh, a more stable file, but uh, it's going to take longer to render. You can do that if you want. For this little piece, it's not, uh, not that important. I'm going to hit Add to Render Queue. So now, over in our Render Queue here, you can select you know, Job 1 and hit Render 1. You can select Job 2 and just hit Render 1. Or if you've just clicked off there and none are selected, you can choose to render all. So if you've got like 10 videos here, you can just render them all at once. And we're going to do that, and you'll see how quick it is. So hitting Render All, you can see now it's doing our MP4 version. And again, this is a very quick little timeline here. It's like 40 seconds of you know, a few videos, some uh, basic color grades and some music. And you can see it's already done our MP4 and our ProRes. There we go. That's given you all the fundamental tools to open up the program, start clicking around and, and sort of familiarizing yourself with where everything is. But if you do want to continue to learn as an editor and grow and you're still not 100% sure where to start with your own edits, then take the course that I've put up. It's completely free. It's on Envato Tuts Plus. It's our guide to DaVinci Resolve for beginner editors and there's also one for color grading as well. We'll link both of those videos at the end of this video. Also, let me know down in the comments if there's any other programs that you want some quick start guides to just to wrap your head around where everything Thing lives. It's a really fun industry to be part of, so I'm very happy to help you learn if you are brand new to editing. All right, until next time, guys, happy editing.